You want to say hi? You want to say hi? Hmm? What are you doing? What are you doing? Hello and welcome to a reading vlog. I asked y'all what you wanted. Y'all said you wanted a vlog. Oh look at Cassie. Cassie's in the sun. You're so cute. Okay, bye bye. So, um, I'd been sort of planning to do a vlog for this for a while. And uh, so here we are. I have an arc, an e arc of the Atlas Six. Or Atlas Six? Is it the Atlas Six or Atlas Six? I can check. The Atlas Six. And it's such a like hyped, talked about book that I just thought it'd be fun to do a reading vlog for it. So here we are. That said, it is not on my TBR. The book from my TBR that I'm currently reading is A River Enchanted. And I'm not loving it. Um, I don't hate it, but it's gonna be probably a two or a three unless something drastic changes. But anyway, that is not what this vlog is for. I mean, I bring it up because like I will be listening. That's my current audiobook, so like I will be listening to it. So I may mention how I'm doing with that. But my new physical book or my about to be current physical book will be The Atlas Six. And uh, I'm blogging it. And that's that's the story of this video. I just filmed some regular channel videos and I just complained on my Insta story because I had to film them twice because I have this curse that I don't know if I've mentioned, but literally every single time that I post or that I film a Abercrombie related video, it doesn't matter what else I'm filming that day. If one of the things that I am filming that day is an Abercrombie related video, then my camera will be ever so slightly out of focus. And I was filming, one of the videos I was filming today was an Abercrombie related video. And as I was filming, I was like, I feel like I am slightly out of focus. And a little voice in my head was like, you're filming an Abercrombie video. You're guaranteed that you're slightly out of focus. But I was like, no. Then I like overthought it, you know, like double, double bluff. <laughs> <laughs> where like, okay, no, the, the way that it's gonna get me is if I try to fix it now because I think it's out of focus and if I try to make it be in focus, that's when it'll go out of focus if I take that step. So really, I mean, like, honestly, like, if I had tried to focus it, that probably is how it would have gone because that's, that's the nature of my curse. So I looked at it and usually when that's happened, it's been frustrating, but it's been just in focus enough to where I'm like, this is not ideal, but whatever. I'm not gonna film it again. This time, it was too out of focus. I was like, I absolutely, I cannot, I cannot. So I had to film it twice. I do think the second time through was better on all of the videos. So I guess that's a good thing, but it took a lot more of my day than I had planned. I had planned to use some of that time editing one of the videos so I could post it tomorrow, but it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I am exhausted and I need to start this reading vlog. So I will be reading very shortly. That's what this video is for. Cool. I also just like wanted to explain why I have a full face of makeup on. Because I don't just live like this. I did not wake up like this. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. I think that's all I have to say. Um, yeah, so I'll start reading and I'll let you know how we go. one page, well, one, I don't know, one screen into Atlas 6, and I would just like it to be known that when it said Library of Alexandria, my brain automatically read that as the Library of Alexandria.
So I finished part one of Atlas Six. Um, part one, I was kind of leaning, I mean, I didn't really realize that was gonna be the end of part one, but I figured each chapter in the beginning was introducing one of the Atlas Six on how they're getting, like who they are, what their magic skills are, and why, or how and why they're being invited to by Atlas to this as yet unexplained special group, uh, which has something to do with the Library of Alex uh, Alexandria. And um, I'm intrigued. The writing isn't like spectacular or anything. It feels quite, it feels very YA and it feels sort of quippy and gimmicky. I mean, it's certainly no secret history. Um, so I, this isn't gonna be the sort of like pretentious, velvety, dark academia that, that nothing is. I mean, I will forever be chasing the secret history high um but so far it's it's intriguing and the characters are each quite unique and it's quite a you know a hook these mysterious people with magical abilities and i think it's being explained pretty um organically like it's dumping you into the world right um and through how each of these people is being uh invited to the society you get a little bit bigger idea of like how magic works in in this universe in the the world of this book like who is a magic user and how that all functions so overall i think the ex exposition is being handled quite well better than a lot of books i've read recently so so far i am moderately impressed um but it is slightly i am it is 10 percent of the way through the book part one um but it is I started kind of late, so it is. It's ten o'clock, and we did just spring forward, so that used to be nine o'clock. Um, but I went to bed really, really late the last couple nights because of the springing forward, and I'm all like messed up because of it. I fucking hate daylight savings time. It's the stupidest thing in the world. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's my update. Um, and I must go to sleep. Hey, that's rude, child. Hi, Cassie, guys, come here. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? Mm -hmm. You like the Atlas 6? Okay. Okay. Good night. So, I woke up with a sore throat today, and I think I have a cold, which is great. Um, I did finish the audiobook for River Enchanted. So, yay for that. I hated it. So, yay for being done. Um, that's over. I put in a grocery delivery order for uh, tea and emergency and for uh, stuff to make veggie soup. Um, so, that's arriving shortly. And in the meantime, I will probably listen to. I just got my hold in for, my, for the audiobook of uh, Beautiful World, Where Are You? It's by Sally Rooney. So, let me start listening to that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna probably get into bed and read Atlas 6 tonight, but with very little b-roll, because you do not need to be seeing me in bed sick, because nobody wants that. I don't want that, and I don't have a choice. Oh, um, if I don't look like death, then I might give you a reading update, um, tonight, if I read, like, if I make some progress. But tonight I also... I really need to post thumbnails for the lives that I'm doing Friday and Sunday and also I cannot be sick because I have lives on Friday and Sunday and I'm supposed to be going to get brunch with people on Sunday morning and I do not have time for this so I'm gonna take it easy and uh, hopefully recover speedily so that I can get back to this vlog and to all of the things. Um, Talk to you later. It is Thursday morning. I clearly did not film any clips last night. After editing a video for my channel, I pretty much, I brought my book to bed with me, but I just went to start to sleep. And um, I've taken today off work. Um, I'm sick. So my plan for today is to pretty much stay in bed and read as much as I can. <laughs> Naturally today, they're also coming <clears throat> to do some work on my sink like the maintenance people for my building. Um, I mean, I don't have to be around for it much, but not not great timing. Today is St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I had originally planned, I have Irish flavored coffee <clears throat> and I have vegan sausage and potatoes and cabbage and I was gonna have all that today. 
but um, don't think that's gonna happen today. I don't even think I'm gonna have coffee. I will have some tea, because otherwise I will have a caffeine withdrawal headache. So that's where we're at these days. But um, yeah, <laughs> that's the story with me. Hi, baby kitty. Kaz is very, very chipper this morning. She's running all around chasing your little bolly. Chasing your bolly? Yeah? Wanna say hi? Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. That's my update for you. This vlog is not going according to plan. <laughs> but, um, we're making the best of it. And, um, I suppose this is, uh, this is realistic. Vlogs are supposed to be you seeing uh, into a little bit less, you know, curated life. So, get to see me be sick. You're welcome. <clears throat> oh, I do have reading updates for you. I think I told you I finished River Enchanted, the audiobook, and I hated it. So not too much to say about that, except that I don't recommend. Um, it was sold as adult uh, fantasy, which I got from Book of the Month, and it feels like very bad YA romance. Which, if it had been sold that way, I wouldn't have picked it up. Um, and then I had a really quick audiobook. Um, I got Rizzio from the library, um, which is a novella. So the audiobook at normal speed is like two hours. So I listened to it on double speed. I listened to it for an hour. And that was pretty good. It wasn't great. Um, I gave it three stars. It's a. It's, I guess, from a new series where they're having various authors retell um <clears throat> like do novellas about like events in scottish history so the author of this um i believe is a crime thriller type of author but this novella is about the murder of david rizzio who was like the confidant of mary queen of scots um so this novella is like right before his murder and then the events like right after his murder and how that affects everybody and like why that was done and like if you don't know anything about that part of history like there was like an attempted coup so anyway it's like it's a real skinny little slice of like mary queen of scots history just to do with his murder <clears throat> i thought it was pretty well written and i happened to know a little bit about that because i just like history so then like i'm i didn't i didn't major in history but like i watch a lot of like historical documentaries and historical films and like films that are based on real events in history so like and by, again I'm by no means an expert on British history or on the history of Mary Queen of Scots but like I did know who this guy was and vaguely that like he had been murdered and that there had been <clears throat> some kind of shenanigans like I kind of knew about this a little bit um which if you don't know anything about it I don't think you can really understand it like I've seen some reviews say that oh <clears throat> the author clearly knows her history but she writes it in an accessible way where you don't need to know it I disagree she writes it accessibly but does expect you to know it so like if you kind of know like if you recognize all the names of it but you like don't necessarily remember exactly why you know those names then you're, you're probably gonna do okay but if you don't know anything about Mary Queen of Scots and you don't know anything about this event um I think you'll be very confused and I personally even though I knew about these events felt like it was this was it felt like it should have been like a couple chapters any longer book and I know the project of this is novellas um but nevertheless like I don't think it works as a novella I think it really feels like I just like flipped through a book and skipped to the good part um there was an interesting final chapter that also was quite and I looked at reviews was quite polarizing some people really liked that final chapter and other people really didn't. Um, I didn't feel strongly about it, but I liked it. So I guess I'm on the side of liking it, but I wasn't like, there were some reviews that were like, this book wasn't good, but the last chapter was a great idea. I feel like the last chapter was a good idea, but I didn't like, it wasn't like the saving grace of the book or anything. I thought it was interesting. <laughs> um, anyway, so nice lukewarm review for you. I'm gonna go make some tea, clear up the kitchen and to get in bed and read Atlas 6. I read like half of a chapter of Atlas 6 last night. Um, and I, I, I am enjoying the writing style. So I feel like I will be able to binge this book today. And luckily it's on Kindle. So like reading in bed is a lot easier 
on Kindle. Because you can like be facing any which way and you don't need to like be in the light and it's like lightweight so it's easy to like hold up if you're laying down. Flipping pages is easy, like you don't need two hands. I can read it one-handed so if I need a tissue I only need my thumb to move the next page so it's kind of a good thing that the thing I'm vlogging is an ebook. At least something went right. Um, okay. Oh, you know what I can do today for Irishness? <laughs> I have some steel cut oats. So, is that Scottish or Irish? Oh, is that me? Maybe that's Scottish. Whoops. No, I think it's Irish. Well, regardless, I think having porridge of any kind is pretty Irish. Maybe I'll have some porridge. But right now, I just want to eat. Um, talk to you later. Maybe by, t maybe by this evening, if I stay in bed all day, I'll be ready for some more interesting content. But, um, okay. Talk to you later. Yes, I am in bed, <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to tell you that one of the characters is talking about the galley kitchen that's in the uh, how, uh, apartment or house, how, apartment I think, that he's living in with some other people, and this other person goes into their galley kitchen, and this is the description of the kitchen. Retreating hastily to the galley kitchen, which had not been updated, aside from Max's so-called hacks, aka mild property damage, since the rise of refrigeration and which possessed only the meagerest counter space necessary to be considered a kitchen at all. That is a description of my kitchen. I felt so seen. So my building is an old, uh, very old sort of historic building that I think, it, I think it used to be a hotel. Um, it didn't used to be an apartment building, they converted it. But my kitchen is, I don't, I mean, I don't show it a ton in videos because there's not much to see. It's teeny tiny and like very old fashioned. Um, so, and it has mostly the original fixtures. They've just been, like, painted and here and there fixed up. But, like, I have a teeny tiny fridge because that's all that would fit there anyway. Um, and there's, like, pretty much no counter space, like, at all. That's why I have a table that I use as my kitchen counter. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I just, I just wanted to mention that I felt seen by the description of a kitchen. Well, I'm about halfway through the book and I've had a shower, so I feel feel a little bit better temporarily. Um, so I thought I'd check in, now would be a good time. Also, I did find my uh, Blarney, what is it? Blarney Tech um, sweatshirt. <laughs> and it is St. Patty's Day. I even found green sweatpants. So like, I'm, if we're being sick in bed, I'm quite festive. Um, but yeah, I thought we could talk about the book for a second. I'm liking it so far. I don't think it would be like, you know, an all-time favorite or anything, but it's very readable. I mean, I'm sick and I'm pretty much, I'm, well, I'm not flying through it because I have to keep stopping for sick reasons. I'm getting through it pretty quickly and I'm pretty interested and I'm finding that both the plot and world as well as the characters and their interest dynamics and personalities are a lot more interesting and nuanced and have more depth than I expected. Like, I don't want to make it sound like it's the most deep thing I've ever read. There's a lot more than I expected from this. So overall, I would say I'm enjoying it. And I am intrigued, and I'm very curious to see where it goes. And I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that a book called The Atlas Six would have six perspectives. <laughs> but I'm finding them each to be unique perspectives. So like, that's been my complaint other times with other books where I'm like, these perspectives are indistinguishable. <laughs> Versus here, I mean, it's nothing like Joe Abercrombie where like, from line one, you're like, I know whose head we're in without you telling me. Obviously, it's not that. But they are very different perspectives with very, you pretty unique personalities that I find interesting. So, yeah. I'm liking it, again, more than I expected to. I'm foreseeing, like, probably four stars, like, unless it gets really bad, or if it blows my mind at the end, it might even pull out a five. Who knows? We'll see. It's already four o'clock, so I don't know if I'll be able to finish today. Um... But I'll definitely read a lot more and then hopefully finish tomorrow, I guess. Um, yeah, so I'll talk to you later.
So it is now two days later. Um, my cold got significantly worse Thursday night. So I couldn't read and then it was even worse all of Friday. Uh, so I even canceled the live, well, postponed the live that I was supposed to do Friday night. I'm doing it now, hence the makeup. <laughs> I feel so much better today. Like I was worried that postponing it only one day yeah, yesterday when last night I still felt awful. I was like, I pushed it back one day, but maybe I should have pushed it back more. Um, but I feel <sighs> so much better today. Just kind of like exhausted, like a, a wrung out dish towel. <laughs> but I feel pretty good. Yes, guys? Um, anyway, I just thought I'd check in, let you know. I mean, I physically could not read anything. So I just listened to audiobooks. Hey, what are you doing, guys? Hmm? What are you doing? Huh? Cassie Cats. Were you my nursemaid? Did you help me when I was sick? No, you didn't. Ow! You're so rude. Kaza dutifully sniffed all of my tea, stole all of my tissues, and uh, tried to drink all my water. She was uh, such an excellent nursemaid. Yeah, so that's just my quick update. Um, I've just been chilling today, you know, still recovering. Didn't want to, you know, decide to dive into things too quickly, only to relapse because tomorrow I have to go to brunch and have another live. So thank God I'm feeling better. So anyway, live tonight about Hob and maybe I can squeeze in some reading of Atlas 6 again tomorrow morning before the brunch or tomorrow night after the live. Um, so no, no real progress to report. I did read a bit after checking it last time, but not too far. So I still have about half the book to go. And yeah, um, that's, that's all I have to say. So <laughs> catch you later. Good morning and happy Saturday. Um, I, I'm trying, I'm going to try to read a little bit of Atlas 6 now before brunch. Um, I have like maybe an hour, probably not quite an hour. No, I have an hour. I have an hour. So I'm going to read it for an hour. But uh, quick reading updates. Um, I did, I mean, I did, I don't know, what did I have the update to with yesterday? Just that I wasn't dying anymore. Um, I did binge a lot of audiobooks while I was sick. Um, so I finished, I started, I don't know if I mentioned this at all. I don't think I did. Okay, so on St. Patrick's Day, um, I had my audiobook that I was about to start, which like, I actually thought that day and I was like, I'll update them about this and then I was dying. Um, so I didn't get to eat, you know, bangers and mash and have Irish coffee and all that, but I was listening to Beautiful World Where Are You? That one. By Sally Rooney. Um, and she's Irish and they are Irish in the book and the narrator is Irish. So that was, I didn't really think about it. I'd just been wanting to read that for a while. My hold came in. So I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Um, and I was like, actually, this is perfect timing. Irish. Um, and I loved it. I gave it five stars. Um, Sally Rooney is very much not for everybody, uh, I gather. I loved Normal People. I think that was a favorite of the year. No, that's my water. Hi, Cassie Cass. You've been a real demon this morning. What you got to say? Okay, good talk. Yeah, so I loved Normal People and I loved Beautiful World Where Are You? Five stars. Um, I, it would bother me, the no quotation marks thing, but I did both on audio. I started Normal People physically, and I was like, Whoa, no quotation marks, I cannot with that. So I did it on audio, and then I, I didn't even think about it for, for Beautiful World, Where Are You? I was like, I'm obviously going to do it on audio again <laughs> for the same reason. And the narrator was really good, so. I would recommend it. However, uh, apparently a lot of people don't jive with Sally Rooney, so. I personally do, so I would recommend it. Um, trigger warnings for, like, all of the things. Um. <laughs> She, her books aren't liked. Um, then I also binge read or binge listened to A Good Marriage, which is the book of the month, the club book that I got ages ago. I'll just get these books. I'm being lazy, but I'll get them and show you. I stack all the books as I read them in a month so that when it's time to do the wrap up, my stack is already ready to go. Beautiful World, Where Are You? Loved it. Five out of five stars. Would recommend. Um, and I have one more. I have another Sally Rooney book that I haven't read yet. It's her earliest one. Because I think she wrote it before, Normal People, and that's Conversations with People or something like that. Um, hi, guys. So anyway, I loved it. Then I listened to A Good Marriage by Kimberly Mc... 
book with Crete. And I got this from Book of the Month, obviously, um, a while ago. Um, cause uh, I have, not all, but like I've tried to move my unread books to my bedroom so they can haunt me. <laughs> so I was laying in bed, unable to function. Kaz, can we not? What are you doing? Cats! Hey! Cats! <laughs> Cats! Stop it! Hey! Stop it. You're being naughty. Hey! You wanna get sprayed? <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, so yeah, well, I was laying in bed unable to function. Then I had like all my unread books and I have a whole shelf that's like just Book of the Month Club books. Uh, and I was like, all right, which of those is available on from the library? So that's kind of what I was doing. Um, so anyway, uh, I actually really liked it. Um, I gave it four stars. I don't read a ton of like mystery thrillers, so I'm not an expert. But for me, who doesn't really know the... Like, maybe it's, like, super predictable for people who've read a lot of thrillers. It kept my interest. I was also dying. So there's that. It's not like I was uh, high-functioning when I was listening to it. Um, but it kept me distracted and interested the entire time. Um, I didn't super love the ending. Um, like, I didn't hate it. Um, but I was like, oh, okay. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's my game of four stars, not five. Um, but I would, I would recommend it. Then um, I finally listened to Ray Bear, which I've been looking forward to for forever, and I have this super cool fairy loot edition of it, because I was convinced that I would at least like it, and I did not like it. I thought it was terrible. So I do not recommend that. Um, I ate that, and I was talking to my friend. Hey, cats! I was trying to find a way to describe it, and I was like, so it's, it feels to me like cats what the fuck it feels like if you went to like a buffet for um themes magics tropes identities magic systems whatever and you, like you were starving and crammed everything onto the plate but then served that plate as like an intentionally paired entree cat oh my god Okay, what I'm trying to say is it was like overcrowded with like everything. Like the author had all of these ideas for magic, for world building, for um, the politics, for the, for everything, for identities, for um, like themes and points she wanted to try to make kind of allegorically, um, just like everything. And I was like, individually, a lot of these things could be cool but they are all just too crowded in with other things that like everything is like it felt like a drag even though it was just like bursting all the time but that's because like we didn't have time to actually engage with anything everything was info dumped and rushed through so then because you don't care about what's happening or at least I didn't then it feels slow because I'm waiting to care but it's actually not slow it keeps like speeding through things um and there's so many baffling choices like there is like a mystery to do with like erasure of memory, but like the book opens where you see that past already. And then you see the moment when the memory gets erased. So you already know the past. And then like you watch this character not know their past for a bit and then they get their memories back. And it's like, why wouldn't you open it with them not having the memories? So we would also wonder like, what was the point of that? It just felt all over the place and Again, like when you have like an entree from a restaurant, you know, like there's a lot of tasty things out there, but you can't put them all in one plate. You pick like your the main key, like the centerpiece of the entree, and then pick out some flavors that you think will like help to like balance it or pair well with it or enhance it uh, to go with it. You don't just put everything you think tastes good on one plate. I mean, unless you're at a buffet, but anyway, so that's how I feel about it. And I do not intend to read the second one. And that too, I mean, honestly, the way that this one ends, it feels like the happy ending just has a wrench thrown in it for the sake of having an excuse to have a sequel. And I was just like, absolutely not. I do not care. What are you doing, guys? What are you doing? Oh my god, you're so cute, though. Nothing made it cute.
Can you chill now? You ready to chill? Yeah, take a nap. Okay, two more to go. <laughs> Got through a lot. Um, then I listened to A Lady's Guide to Etiquette and Murder. I actually put this on my wish list, um, on my Amazon wish list, um, pretty recently. And then when my patron sent it to me, saying, you know, this looks like some light, fluffy fun for recovering from being sick. And then I got the audiobook from the library because it was available because I was like, yeah, it does sound like light, fluffy fun, but I cannot be reading a physical book right now. Um, and I thought I gave it three stars. At first I thought I liked it more, but it kind of like, it kind of lost me a little bit. Um, it wasn't terrible, but like the mystery uh, was, I don't know, it fizzled a bit in my opinion. And then I, I, I didn't like the ending. Um, like the the answer to it I was like ah, I don't like that so I didn't hate it uh, I thought it was pretty good um and I would read um some other books I think the third book in this series because they're all the ladies guide to something and something and they're all like mysteries um and the third one I think won some awards so I mean I would read it's like it's light I read it I listened to it all in one day you know it's short um so I it's not like amazing but it was it was fun I might read or like casually listen to some more if and when I feel like it. And then last is um, My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyen Khan Braithwaite. Um, and I really liked this. I gave it four stars. It is a very unusual book and it's it's very very short. So I listened to this quite quickly as well. Um, I'd had this for a while. I had like seen it and wanted to read it immediately and then of course I didn't read it immediately, even when I buy books with the intention of reading them immediately, unless it's an obligation book. Um, it's not a thriller in the traditional sense, because you're not like trying to figure out who the killer is, you know who the killer is. <laughs> there isn't really a mystery. Um, it's just her sister, the main character's sister, is a serial killer. Like, it's literally the title of the book. <laughs> um, so it's just kind of like, I don't know, it, delving into what that would be like to be complicit and an enabler of a serial killer <laughs> and how it's quite complicated their family dynamics so um, and I'm, it makes some interesting points about appearance and sexism and um people's the way people perceive you often dictates their um like perception is like more important than truth when it comes to like how people view you or the judgments that they make so anyway, I would recommend it. Didn't give it a full five because I was like, I, I can't, there's no specific reason. Like I hated the ending or something. I was just like, I, like I, I quite like this, but like not, not five stars. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, that's, this is what I got up to while I was sick. <laughs> so now I still have, ooh, I have like 45 minutes to read Atlas Six. And then I don't want to be at brunch for a long time, but it's not really up to me because my parents are picking me up um so I, I can only leave when they leave I told them I have to be back in time for my live but we'll see the idea of coming back even sooner than that so I have time to read and do my live I'm not holding my breath so anyway I'm gonna read now and um maybe when I get back and maybe after the live depending how late that goes Otherwise, I'll probably be finishing this on Monday. I thought I would finish this. I started with this on Wednesday, the day I got sick. No, Tuesday. And then I got sick on Wednesday. Um, so, I, I mean, I for sure thought I'd be done by Friday. Things did not go according to plan. So, here we go. I am excited to finish this book. I've been really wanting to finish it, but I was like, I cannot unless I have it on audio because I can't. I need to be laying down and I cannot like hold a book and read um, so I'm excited to be able to read again I feel so much better like I feel like I've looked and sounded so healthy during the live um, with Mara last night that I feel like people think I'm lying that I wasn't really sick because they're like eh, you don't seem like you've been sick for three days because I don't even feel like I've been sick for three days I mean a little bit I feel kind of like tired and dehydrated but I mean, the difference between Friday and Saturday. Like, if my boss thought that I was faking because, like, I said I was sick Friday and then saw me Saturday and was like, there's no way you were. I, I wouldn't blame him because I seemed so fine. And I feel so much better. Like, it's staggering how quick the turnaround on that was. So, I mean, yay. 
I don't want to still be sick, but yeah, I mean, I know I acknowledge that I do not look and sound like I've been sick for three days. So, um, anyway, reading. Yes, that's what's happening. Cool. Talk to you later. So this vlog, just in every conceivable way, has not gone according to plan. Okay, so it is like a, I don't even know when I last checked in, but it's like a week later. Um, my, it just, getting sick made everything get pushed. Um, did I already explain this? I don't know. But like, I originally thought, okay, like, I don't have to start some other books yet because I have like a weekend and a week to do those things. So back when I started this vlog, I was like, I'll finish this book and this vlog in a couple days. And then by the weekend, I can, in that weekend, I'd be able to read a bunch of books that I had upcoming lives for and all of that just got like pushed and pushed and pushed and so then I just had to like pause this so that I could read the books for the lives that were now imminent um and now finally finally today I have a, a bit of time so I have a live this morning I didn't have to read a book for this one thank goodness um and after I, after I'm done with that live I was originally going to have another live today but that got moved to tomorrow so I have the rest of the evening to read and vlog for you because tomorrow, which is Sunday, my mom is coming over so we can binge watch Bridgerton and this has become urgent because Beth wants to do a podcast episode about Bridgerton and she wants to do it like, like record it pretty soon. So I have to see all of Bridgerton immediately um, and my mom and I watch it together. So um, I bought like, uh, I have always wanted one of these. So I got like a tiered dessert tray um, and I'm gonna make scones and we're just gonna like have a little girly binge party um, I don't I, I'll try maybe I'll record some of like the final Dessert display. I don't think my mom wants to be in a vlog, um, but we'll see I might get some footage of that But my hope is to finish both the book and for the most part the vlog today And then you know, maybe tack on some Bridgerton extravaganza footage. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see because I have to do another vlog for my patrons like immediately. <laughs> I'm so blind. Anyway, just letting you know the situation and how just none of this vlog went according to that. I thought it'd be like a couple days of like vaguely dark academia reading a hyped book and that's the whole vlog but instead I did a bit of that and then got sick and then read a whole bunch of other books that I told you about and then just couldn't do anything. And now I'm gonna like throw Bridgerton into this. Like, I don't know what the fuck this vlog is anymore, but we've gone too far. So <laughs> gonna wrap it up and I don't know what I'm gonna call this video when it's all done, but <sighs> okay, great. Um, yes, I must to the live this morning and then I'll circle back for some reading. That's what this vlog is for. <laughs>
Well, I finished the Atlas Six. Uh, it is about 10 o'clock and I had half the book to go today. Don't do that again, please. Please. Um, and I really liked it. I did not love it, but I really, really liked it. Um, I think I'm gonna give it four stars. Cause I do think um, the pacing was, at times the pacing was brilliant and at other times the pacing was like really dragging. Um, overall though, I mean, four stars, still quite high. Um, it just like wasn't like quite there <laughs> for it to be five. Um, but the concept is really cool. And then it kept doing much more clever things. I think I said this, it's been so long since I started this journey. I think I said this in the beginning that it was like doing a lot more clever things than I expected, than I went into it thinking that would be likely to find in this book. I expect, I had, I had pretty low expectations, honestly. I, I thought it was possible that I would find it to be amusing, but I had pretty low expectations for it being interesting or clever. And it is actually quite interesting and quite clever, um, both in terms of like the, the world and like concepts that it's introducing, as well as the way in which it goes about revealing slowly those concepts to you and revealing the mystery of everything that's going on slowly the slow unraveling of the mystery and the way that different the it's not nested storytelling necessarily but it's kind of almost like nested storytelling um so it, it's quite clever in the narrative structure as well there were again like with the pacing um there was also like passage of time was like really difficult to gauge sometimes um where there'd be you know because we have all these perspectives right and we jump around but so we'd be in one perspective and like some thing happens, you know, between them. And then we go to the next perspective and there's like no way to know how much time has passed until, you know, somewhere halfway through that perspective, this person thinks to themselves about how, um, man, and they hadn't even talked to that person whose perspective you were in previously, um, since that thing happened between them a month ago. And you're like, oh, okay, so a month has passed, I guess, since that thing happened I read in the last chapter. But it would just be like, there wasn't even like a montage here's what we've been up to for the last however long. Um, it would just be these gaps. It would be just jumping. So we would have this chapter where like this like significant interaction occurs between person A and person B um, that was in person A's perspective. And then we go to person B's perspective and you're like, when are we? And person B is like, man, and I haven't even talked to person A since uh, A and I had that in intense interaction <laughs> and, this, and you'd be like okay but so like what happened since then <laughs> what have y'all been doing <laughs> so it was just like stuff like that where um yeah it would just be like the weird gaps in time and like you don't have to show me everything that's happening every day but usually there's still I don't know I feel like books usually have like it's clear why time has skipped or what has happened during that time skip or whatever I don't know it was stuff like that where I was just like I'd feel like whiplash sometimes about stuff like that. Overall, um, it's really interesting. And I actually, I was thinking this when I was reading it, um, that it's too magical for me to really think of it as like great dark academia. But it is more dark academia than like a fantasy story. So it is kind of this like sweet spot between the genres. Uh, like you, Put it on lists for both and also what i was thinking was that the vibe of this book and the way that this all goes down and the mystery and the magic of it all and the secret society of it all is actually a lot more what i would have expected ninth house by lee bardugo to be i think by the time i picked up ninth house i'd heard enough about what it was going to be that i no longer had those expectations but like originally when i heard that lee bardugo was going to be writing a dark academia slash like a fantasy dark academia that's based on her experience at Yale and the secret societies of Yale. What Atlas Six actually is, is much more what I would originally have imagined and expected Ninth House to be. So we got there in the end. <laughs> it's obviously not taking place in Yale. Um, and it's obviously not what Lee Bartuko, but this is the kind of story that I would have expected. Uh, it's definitely not what this is. I don't want to. This is, I'm not saying this is a good read alike for Ninth House because it's not. It's a good read alike for what I originally thought Ninth House would be. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I liked it and I would recommend it. Um, and I was actually thinking that I would, might recommend this to my dad, which I also would not have expected just going into this book that I would be like, I'm gonna make my dad read this. Uh, but I think he would really like it, which surprises me as well. 
Anyway, um, I need to get some sleep so that I can wake up early and make scones and things for my mother. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, I might get some footage of that. Not sure, but in case I don't, um, thanks for watching. And I'll hopefully see you in another future vlog that is less chaotic than this was. So, <laughs> good night.